Hey guys, it's Hannah, and today I'm coming to you with my Ravenclaw reading recommendations. Yes, you heard me right. Today I am finally wrapping up my Hogwarts House reading recommendation series. This has been my most highly requested video. Basically every single time I post a new video, someone just comments, when are you going to be doing the Ravenclaw reading recs? And it's finally here, so you can finally stop asking me. <laughs> but I'm really glad that you guys are really excited about these videos because I really love filming them, and they're probably one of my favorite series that I've done on my channel. But if you've missed out on any of my other Hogwarts House reading recs, then I will leave them all linked on the screen as well as down below so you can go watch them for Gryffindor, Slytherin, and Hufflepuff. And now we are finally at Ravenclaw. So just like I say in all the other videos, essentially what I do in these videos is recommend five books based on the traits of each individual house. So today, since I'm going to be doing Ravenclaw, the main traits of the house are intelligence, learning, creativity, originality, and wit. So those are all kind of things that I looked for in all of these books, and I think they really exhibit these traits well. So without any further ado, here are my Ravenclaw Claw reading recommendations. The first recommendation that I have is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This is an adult post-apocalyptic novel. It's slightly dystopian-esque, but it's not exactly dystopian. Essentially, in the story, the human population has almost entirely died out due to a flu. And the story takes place in multiple different timelines, so we follow a timeline during when the flu has actually happened and it's wiped out the majority of humanity. And then it also follows a second timeline that takes place 20 years after the flu. The main plot follows this girl who is part of a theater company that is going around and performing Shakespeare for different camps that are still set up after this flu. And at its core, it's really a story about humanity and life and what all of that really means to us. The reason that I'm choosing this as a Ravenclaw book is because it's the type of book that really makes you think. And obviously, Ravenclaw being a house about wit and learning, I think that definitely coincides with a lot of the themes of this story. A lot of the characters go through a journey where they learn a lot about themselves, and you also learn a lot about yourself while you're reading this book. At least I felt that way. But it's very complex in a lot of ways, even just the way that it's structured. It takes place over multiple timelines, like I said, and we follow several different characters and we get all of their perspectives. So it can get a bit complex at times, but you just kind of have to think your way through it, and I really think that that's very Ravenclaw. But yeah, I absolutely adore this book and highly, highly recommend it. So if you're a Ravenclaw and you're looking for some fiction that's very thought-provoking, this would definitely be my recommendation. The next book on my list is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This book is extremely popular right now, and it's been number one on the New York Times bestsellers list for a while, and it absolutely deserves that place. It follows the story of this girl named Star Carter who witnesses the murder of her best friend by a police officer. It's inspired by the Black Lives Matter movement, so it has a lot of political context to it, and I think it definitely has a very important and relevant message. It's one of my favorite books that I've read so far this year. I absolutely adored it. I definitely imagine Star to be a raven Claw. I know she actually really likes Harry Potter and she talks about Harry Potter in the book, and I can't remember if she says which house she's in, but if I were to sort her, I would sort her into Ravenclaw. <laughs> and again, it's another one of those books that really just makes you think, and some of the things that happen in the story really make you step back and assess your own viewpoint, and I think that type of critical thinking and like self-evaluation is a very Ravenclaw thing to do. So yeah, this is a fantastic story. It's very devastating, but it's also very hopeful and very thought-provoking, like I said, and that's why I think it makes the perfect Ravenclaw book. The next recommendation I have is another recent read for me, and that is Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. This book is very difficult to describe, and that's part of the reason I'm actually including it on this list, because it is truly one of the most original and creative stories I have ever read. It's a fantasy novel that follows the story of this man named Laszlo Strange, and he is a librarian, and he has always been obsessed with the Forgotten City of Weep. The Forgotten City of Weep, as the name suggests, is a city that has been forgotten gotten throughout time and history. It's been named the City of Weep because no one can actually remember what the name of the city is. And I don't really want to say too much more about what it's about because it's definitely the type of book that you should go into with very minimal expectations, but it's so magical and so well-developed and so unique. The world building and the development of the plot and the characters is so creative and it's unlike anything I've read in other YA fantasy. I absolutely adored it from the first page to the very last page. It kept me on my toes. It also kept me thinking because it has a lot of layers to the plot and you learn a lot as you're reading it as well. So just every aspect of this really just makes me think of everything that is Ravenclaw. Also, the colors are very Ravenclaw-esque. I know this isn't bronze, but like, you know, it's kind of similar. <laughs> but truly, the story down to its core is just such a Ravenclaw story. Laszlo Strange is definitely a Ravenclaw in my eyes. He might be somewhat of a Hufflepuff, but I'm leaning more towards Ravenclaw. So if you've yet to pick this book up, I highly, highly recommend 
recommend it, and definitely if you're looking for something along the Ravenclaw lines. The next recommendation that I have is Feminism is for Everybody by Bell Hooks. Every time I do these videos, I like including books that are kind of different, like a nonfiction book or a graphic novel or comic, so that's partially why I chose this one. I had to read this book for my Intro to Gender Studies class, and I absolutely fell in love with it, because I went into this book thinking that I would know pretty much everything that it had to tell me, but I was so, so wrong. <laughs> if you don't know much about feminism, or if you know a lot about feminism, or if you're just interested in learning some more about it, this is 100% the book for you. It essentially just outlines feminism and and what it stands for, and why it's important, and its benefits, and how literally everybody can benefit from it. It's truly one of my favorite books that I've ever read because it was such an enjoyable reading experience for me because I learned so much from this book. But I'm including it on this list because it's one of those thought-provoking books that you really have to sit down and kind of reevaluate sometimes your entire existence. <laughs> if you're the type of person who really likes learning or you just really like to think critically about things, this is definitely something I would recommend. And also I feel like most Ravenclaws, since the house very much values learning and intelligence and wit would probably enjoy thinking critically about things. <laughs> I cannot recommend this book enough, and a lot of you guys have asked me to do like a feminist lit reading recommendation video, which is something that I'm very much considering, but this is always my top recommendation for that. And finally, the very last book I have on this list to recommend is The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender by Leslie Walton. I just realized I have two books on this list that are blue and have like gold foil designs on the cover and both have strange in the title, and I didn't do that intentionally, but like, I don't know, I guess that just makes me think of Ravenclaw. <laughs> the Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender follows the story of this girl named Ava Lavender who was inexplicably born with wings. It's a magical realism novel and it takes place over like four generations of the Lavender family. So it's narrated by Ava Lavender, but it follows the story of her great-grandmother, her grandmother, her mother, and herself, and it's mostly focused on their relationships with each other and their relationships with love. I will also put a trigger warning on this book for rape and abuse, so if you're not comfortable reading those things then I would probably stay away from this one. But the reason that I include it on my Ravenclaw list is because the writing in this book is so lyrical and beautifully written, and it's truly the most creative and unique writing I have ever read. It's so original, it is so unlike anything else, you can honestly sense every single thing that happens in here. You can smell the food, you can feel anything that she's describing, it's just incredible. And the other thing, again, is that it's another one of those stories that has multiple layers to it, and I think that reminds me of Ravenclaw because you just kind of have to unpack all of those layers and really think your way through all of them. So sometimes it might get a little bit confusing because there are so many different perspectives that we're getting, but if you take your time with it, it's definitely not confusing at all. But yeah, the prose in this one is just so stunning and so creative, and I adore it. The story and the characters as well are just fantastic, and they're one of my favorite parts of it too, but the writing just stands out. So if you're looking for a Ravenclaw book that'll kind of remind you a bit of Luna Lovegood, this one would definitely be the one I'd recommend. Alright guys, so that is it for my list of Ravenclaw reading recommendations. I hope you all enjoyed watching this video. Also, I forgot to say this at the beginning of the video, but I put on like winged eyeliner with like actual wings and it went like a bit more dramatic than I was expecting, but you know, it kind of worked and I just thought it went with the Ravenclaw aesthetic. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below if you agree with any of the books that I put on this list or if there are any other books that you would also include into Ravenclaw. Like I said before, if you want to see any of the other videos in this series, I will have them all linked on the screen as well as down below so you can go ahead and watch them. Also, since you guys really like this series, if you guys would like me to make a part two to this series where I just give like five more recommendations for each house, I can definitely do that. So if you'd like to see that, please let me know down below. But I will just say that won't be anytime soon because I just did this series, so it'll be in a little while after I've read some more and picked out some more books that I think fit in. If you'd like to follow me on any of my social media, all of my links are in the description box as always. But thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye!